Hello, Satan here, getting ready for some ASMR. Let's do it. You like that, huh? No, that's terrible. But the reason I'm dulling this knife is because I'm about to do a personal experiment. I want to see if my freehand sharpening, which I've been practicing basically at least on two knives a day every day for about the last month, I feel like my, my elbow is getting raised suitably. I feel like my wrist is staying straight suitably. I feel like my results are being good suitably. So I want to see if I can match a fixed angled systems results. If I try my best on both types of system, which can get the longest rope cut test result. So that's the video today. The knives we're using are these Spyderco mules in MagnaCut. So these MagnaCut mules, I've used them before in tests. Saltwater, edge retention, uh, they are basically the same. They have same heat treatment. They've got the same Rockwell hardness, which I think is about 63 or something like that. Uh, they are, you know, it's about as, it's about as uh, you know, variable eliminating as I can get in this highly scientific test. At any rate, uh, we will do maximum effort sharpening on the stones first. We're going up through a series of ceramic Shapton stones, starting at 320, going through the uh, Rockstar 500, Kuramaku 1000, Glass 2000, Koromaku 5000, and then Glass 8000, and then a leather strop with a diamond. Uh, 1. 0. 0.1 micron paste on it, so a very fine micron uh, strop on there. So that's the first knife, and then the second knife will be using the Worksharp fixed angle system and getting the best possible edges that I can I can wrangle on that one too. So should be interesting. I'm going to aim for about 17 degrees with both, but this is a bit more of an imprecise science here. So it's really just about what my skill level is and matching, see if I can match myself uh, rather than you know exactly dialing things in. So uh, let's get to sharpening the first of the knives. So this is the 320 stone, start off with, does all of the edge setting and stock removal, gets you a, uh, an edge that you're gonna then improve from this point onwards, and it looks a little bit like that, pretty rough scratch pattern. You know, you'd, so you probably could finish this and have a toothy edge, but probably not what you're desiring. This is the 500 Rockstar. This is uh, just honing that scratch pattern, still doing a bit of stock and chip removal, and uh, looking like this, it's tightened all that grit up just a little bit. The thousand stone, this is like the proper sharpening stone, and uh, this guy is where I do the bulk of my work, and uh, this will narrow all those um, scratches down, but still do a little bit of uh, shaping stock removal, and it looks a little bit like that, starting to get a little bit of polish. You can see the burr there, the silver line. This one's the 2000 Shapton Glass. This is where I always start to notice the first signs of a polish. This is definitely starting to be a finishing stone. And uh, as such, you sort of start to get a bit of reflectivity in your edge to just the naked eye at least. And under a scope, you start to see the light kind of starts to bounce off and get those kind of uh, aura orbs. And then uh, the 5000 stone, a super smooth polishing stone. Uh, the knife really skates on the surface of this one, and as such, it uh, basically doesn't do much stock removal. It's just a polishing stone, uh, pretty much. Whilst, I mean, they obviously do all take some stock off, but uh, leaving you with a you know pretty refined edge, like the scratches are minimal, apart from the deep ones, which kind of just get like buffed over and laminated over, so to speak. Um, that's not the right terminology. Uh, 8,000 stone here for a truly shiny edge, at least the naked eye. Under a microscope, you're still going to be looking at something like that with scratches visible, but obviously a lot of light reflecting as well. And in real life, naked eye, that's, you know, a pretty mirrored edge. So moving to the KME, 17 degrees per side, uh, shining up with the 220 stone. Well, the opposite of shining, scratching up with the 220 stone. This is a super rough diamond stone that will reset basically any steel's edge. Very, very rough, deep, scratchy finish there, as you can see. Uh, deep bearing, everything pretty intense about that stone there. You only move up by 100 grip points to 320 next with the... Um, this isn't the KME, this is the Workshop Professional Pro. What did I say KME for? In my mind, it's like Hoover's. KMEs are these, you know, but this is the Workshop one. That's 320, uh, only marginal narrowing of the grit lines, in my opinion, but I guess it's all uh, leading to something. The 400 grit stone starts to be a little bit more of a uh, sharpening stone rather than a, and a, than a cutting stone, and so you start to get a more refined, you know, machine-ish, factory-ish looking edge. Uh, still needs refinement, though. Good bit of burring there going on as well. 
The 600 stone in this one here, my 600 is quite well worn now. So this is what starts to be like a proper sharpening, almost finishing stone. You could finish that there. You could then buff that or strop that and you'd probably be fine. And then you move up to the 800 grit stone, which is going to again be a little bit finer once again. Much sort of narrower grit project. <laughs> grit progressions on uh, this machine here and it again pretty factory looking uh, pretty um, you know industrial looking under the edge but it all changes when you move to the fine ceramic this must be like a 3000 equivalent type stone or something you can even see there you can see the polish there from the ceramic going over it and then there you go uh, really like immediately like a much sort of cleaner looking edge you can see the light shimmying off um, and yeah that's the real life eye line I lost the footage of me stropping for some reason it just didn't turn out that's what I get uh, but this is the footage of me uh, after the strop um, you know it's really sort of a lot of those scratches are gone entirely um, and yeah just pretty neat smooth looking edge I'm just sort of shielding it from the light but this is it under the naked eye very very shiny and reflective and it's cutting time this is the first knife here this is the fixed angled sharpening system magna cut knife let's see how it does And we're looking at 950. I've got a thousand before, but it's about in ballpark with what I've had from that steel before. Uh, this one here, this is my it's my hand done edge. And I went and went, you know what, I'm not gonna lie, from the beginning, it was a little bit of a tougher push through the rope. And I'll speak about you know the general edge commentary later on. But you know what, you're probably watching, you're probably thinking it's going okay. It really is going okay. And it felt like it was going okay for most of the test. And it actually from how it initially felt, I thought it was going to not last as long as it immediately did, but let's just see how it goes. You suck! Yeah, jackass. You suck! So what's the uh, what's the difference between these two knives? It's quite a variance, uh, 750 to 950. Uh, it speaks volumes, I think, of a couple of things. And the most obvious one to yourselves, and obviously to me as well, is that uh, my skill is not quite high enough yet to be able to really match a you know a fixed angle sharpening system. And that you know, makes a lot of sense because fixed angle sharpening system gives you really only one dimension to, to make mistakes on. Whereas freehand sharpening, you've got all three dimensions to make errors on. And um, over a longer sharpening session as well, your humanness is going to infiltrate into that sharpening session and you're going to have little bits of shake and little bits of movement that you can't even perhaps tell you're doing. So that's obviously what's going on um, with time and with practice, maybe with different stones or better kit. I might, that being said, my freehand kit is pretty good. Um, I may well catch and match my um, my uh, fixed angled result for this steel. Uh, who knows? Uh, I, when I look under the steels, uh, under the microscope at the steels, I can certainly see some curvature, which indicates some micro convexing on the edge as well. And micro convexing on an edge, it's it's not a bad thing, but it certainly seems to slow it down in this specific test. Uh, micro convexing seems to make the absolute, you know, that pointiest of edges last a little bit less long. So I think that's definitely wrought pretty clear in this example as well. A microconvex edge though can absolutely be desirable if you want something that's gonna stay, you know, eight out of 10 sharp for longer, for sure. So not saying it's a bad thing, but I think it's definitely what's happening in this test here. I thought I'd speak for a second about uh, my theories on MagnaCut and why it does pretty well in this test. It's always done well in my rope cutting test. Um, I think that, because really it's a steel in line with like, um, it's 
it's got toughness that is uh, sort of in line with 4V, they say. But then it's got extra sort of um, uh, carbides in it that are going to lead towards uh, edge holding as well. So uh, the, whatever it is about the chemistry of MagnaCut, I think it's uh, almost optimized for a test such as this. And this test is quite different to Laren's Catra card tests. So this test has one major factor in it that the Catra card cutting test does not have, and it is, of course, the cutting board. So every time the knife passes through the rope, it then spoons into the cutting board. And there is nothing I can do about that. I can't free cut rope. It's just, the, I mean, I, I could arrange a completely different type of test, but this test has always been straight into the cutting board. And this cutting board is the one I've been using for years and years and years. So I try and control, control the variables I can, but there is an element of the edge that's going to be tested not only against the rope, but against the board. And my theory is that the tough attributes of MagnaCut may give it some assist when hitting board, because hitting board is probably very uh, on a very small scale there's going to be slight twists and there's a slight bit of board stick that is going to then test the lateral toughness of the knife edge and i think perhaps the magna cut uh, chemistry yields a, a benefit to that part of the the rope cut as well so that's my theory on why because magna cut is consistently tested better than steels like uh, that are in laren's results like his catra cut results are in about the same bracket for him, just purely cutting Catra cards. Catra cards are free held, the knife is held basically in, you know, without any other influencing factors and the cards are just, you know, they just glance over the knife edge and through it goes. So that is a pure uh, abrasive edge retention test. The cards are impregnated with silica cards or something like that. There is a whole science to it and it is a much more scientific way of measuring pure like abrasion resistance for an edge this test here is kind of cutting through stuff into stuff. And I think for that, that's why MagnaCut's recipe really works for this, because not only does it have good you know, materials for edge holding in it traditionally, but it also has that bit of toughness that uh, may help with this second stage of the test as well. So just my thoughts on that too. So I found the interesting to raise, because I always wonder that myself. Consistently, I've, I've outcut lots of other steels that Laren doesn't outcut, Laren and Sean on their on their um, catcher machine. So that's just a, a theory about it from, from my point of view anyway. So yeah, I uh, hope you found this interesting. I certainly have a bit more uh, bit more to go on my freehand sharpening journey, but I'm certainly enjoying it very much. So stay with me and I'll see you all in the next film. Goodbye.